Okay, hi there, and welcome to a short video looking at five key definitions links to the economics of exchange rates. And here are our five definitions. Appreciation, competitive devaluation, currency union, internal devaluation, and the PPP, or Purchasing Power Parity Exchange Rate. Let's go through each in turn. First of all, an appreciation is a rise and increase in the external value of one currency against another or against uh, perhaps a basket of currencies. In other words, the currency gets stronger and an appreciation can only happen inside a floating exchange rate system. Here's a good example. If we take the pound against the dollar, uh, you can see, for example, in 2016, after the Brexit referendum in June of that year, the pound fell quite sharply against the dollar from about $1.45 to close to $1.2025. That's when sterling was depreciating against the dollar, but the dollar was appreciating against the pound. Our second definition is the concept of a competitive devaluation. Now, this happens when a country tries to devalue or lower their currency to increase the price competitiveness of domestic producers, both in domestic, in their home, and also in the overseas markets. So a competitive devaluation is an attempt to use exchange rates, if you like, as a, as a stimulus to the domestic economy. A uh, reasonably, reasonably good example is what's been happening to the Mexican peso against the US dollar. Take a look at what's been happening since 2014. By and large, the peso has been depreciating, falling against the US dollar. For example, in the middle of 2014, $1 would have bought, bought you 13 peso. By 2019, then $1 would have bought you 19 peso. And this, of course, makes it relatively cheaper for US consumers to buy Mexican goods uh, that are imported into the United States. Our third definition is that of a currency union. A currency union is stage four of economic integration. And it's when countries decide to eliminate their own domestic currencies and start to share and use a common currency. For example, as of spring 2019, there are 19 countries inside the remaining 27 EU countries that have the euro as their currency, with interest rates set by the European Central Bank. So a currency union is a deepening of economic integration between the vast majority of member states of the EU. What is an internal devaluation? An internal devaluation uh, has nothing to do with a change in the actual exchange rate. It's where a country tries to become more competitive against other countries by reducing their own wage costs and prices and increasing productivity rather than by devaluing or depreciating the exchange rate. So it's where a country tries to become relatively more competitive in cost and price terms. Internal devaluation can be very painful because it does involve often a period when prices, wages and profits go down. And a good example to use in the exam would be Greece. Take a look at this chart which shows the annual rate of inflation for the Greek economy since the early 1960s. For many years during the 70s and 80s, inflation in Greece was high and volatile. Greece joined the European Union and joined the single currency in 2001 and had relatively, relatively low inflation by their own standards, although higher than the European Union average. But then, of course, as you know, the Greek economy went into a severe depression, deep slump after the financial crisis. And for some years now, Greek inflation has been either zero or negative. In other words, deflation. Now, internal deflation in Greece is a way of helping to make the Greek economy more competitive against their European rivals. But deflation, of course, as many of you will know, also brings significant economic and social costs. Our final concept of five today is the PPP, or Purchasing Power Exchange Rate. So what is this? It's the exchange rate, the currency level, at which the currency of one country is converted into that of another, so that basically we can buy the same amount of goods and services in both countries. In other words, $100, for example, could be converted to PPP 
to see what you can buy with $100 and hopefully you can buy more or less the same quantity of goods and services. We tend to use the PPP exchange rate when measuring GNI per capita and assessing relative living standards between nations. And one measure of whether a country's exchange rate is at PPP levels imperfect is the Big Mac index published by The Economist. This chart shows the global prices for a Big Mac. And this index is regarded as an indicator for the purchasing power of an economy. The average price for a Big Mac burger in Switzerland in January 2019 was over six and a half US dollars compared to that in the UK where it was just over four four dollars. You can then convert the UK UK dollar exchange rate to see whether or not a Big Mac is cheaper in the UK than it might be for example in Chicago or New York. But the Big Mac index is one measure of purchasing power parity. There we go. There's five key definitions linked to exchange rates.